Hello, this is Mark Van de Wittering of the BrainWagon blog. I thought today I would give you a tour of the pile of development boards that I've acquired over the years. I'm just going to walk through them quickly. My goal is really actually to put them all in this box so that they're all in sort of in one place. Um, as I started gathering them for this, I realized that maybe I'm going to actually overfill this box. So uh, uh, for scale, uh, so pretty good size. Um, but uh, I thought we'd get started with this. Uh, there's quite a variety of different boards. And uh, here's one that probably a lot of people are familiar with. So this is an Arduino, which is carrying a shield. This is the classic Arduino, uh, which is a little sticky to get apart because I didn't do a great job of soldering. There we go. So this is the uh, Dual Lumino A or whatever. Um, so this has an AT Mega 328, and this is sort of the granddaddy. There were a few Arduinos before this, but this is a fairly oldish one. Uh, it does have the 328, which has 32K of memory, and it uses the old classic um, USB port. Um, if you follow my blog, you've known that uh, earlier this week I put together a the shield. Um, one of the great things about Arduino is that they have, I'm not going to stick this back in while I'm on camera, um, is that they have the shield architecture so you can program it, plug in different boards to... Uh, extend the capabilities. This is an in-circuit programming board to program more ATmega 328s. So uh, if you're just getting started in programming and hardware hacking and uh, embedded stuff, the community around Arduino is really, really good. And um, these are just little 8-bit processors. They have 32K memory. You can use them to blink LEDs and do actually quite a bit of stuff, but they're not the fastest thing in the world. Um, when this board came out, it was about $30, which now seems pretty excessive. Um, we're going to see some boards later that are cheaper than that, that have more capabilities. But uh, I keep this one around. This is an old one. I'm going to keep this around just to have this uh, in-circuit programming board. You can see the glob of solder I left on this. Oops, wrong way. Um, there's a lot to like about the Arduino, mostly having to do with the community. And there's lots of software available. They're programmed in C mostly, uh, or sort of a variant of, it's not really C++, it's sort of C++, it's depending on how you do it. If you're comfortable with C, it's a great environment to work in. Even if you're not comfortable, it's contained enough and there's enough example code, you can do a lot of fun stuff with it. So, but we got to move on. So, uh, plunk that in the box and we'll move on. Uh, I try and actually keep the cables that I need to program these things in the same place so that when I'm ready to go. Oh, for programming, uh, you can just, there's a, the nice thing about the Arduino, simple download. Um, it's a single download and it's a complete environment, has the programmer, uh, all the software you need. There's no easier board to get started with. The Arduino, um, because of its popularity, spawned a whole bunch of, of uh, Variants and offshoots and crazy stuff. Uh, this one is a Wildfire 2 board that um, the guys at Wicked Device actually sent me. Uh, this is the version 2 of this. There's actually a version 3, which I do have somewhere, but in my funging, I couldn't figure this out. This has a whole bunch of crud on it. So there's a micro USB uh, port, there's Wi Fi, there's uh, uh, I believe there's a real-time clock. There's all sorts of stuff, a little extra memory program, you know, serial access memory. These things have a ton of capability. Um, I really like this board except for one thing, which is um, all the added peripherals kind of chew up your I.O. lines. This was particularly true on this version 2 board. Version 3 improves that a little bit. Um, and but the other thing is just sort of cost effective wise, if you, I forget what these cost, but they're probably in the 50 or 60 buck range. And as we're going to see later, there's probably some additional boards that are uh, a little more cost effective, might be a better fit to, to the, at least the tasks that I perform. Your mileage may vary. Um, there's a lot, a lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool libraries that are with these. These guys do a great job. So if it fit, it's a good fit for your project, give them a try. And thank you for, uh, to Wildfire for sending me some of these. Um, let's see, here's a classic board. <laughs> may, many of you may have seen this. This is a Raspberry Pi. Um, so speaking of sort of cost effective, these, this board is, uh, one of the, uh, earlier, uh, revision. It's a, it's a 
B board, but not the B plus board. So this is one of the older ones. You can tell because it has Wi-Fi or uh, Ethernet, but only two USB, and it's got the large um, flash card uh, SD card slot on the bottom. And somewhat annoyingly, it's got wires sticking out all sides. So you have <laughs> composite video and sound out this side, and USB and Ethernet on this side, and the HDMI out this side, and you know the power and the SD card out this side. It's not a super convenient package. Um, but they are super popular, and so you can buy pre-made boxes for these. I think I got this from Lady Adafruit or something like this. And this board goes in here, and it's a nice, nice case. So $35. I believe this has, I'm remembering that this has 512 megs of RAM on it and a processor that runs at 700 megahertz, uh, ARM-based. And these host a version of Linux. Typically, people run Linux on these, although other operating systems are available. Uh, usually called Raspbian is the one that I've used the most. I've also used Ubuntu on these. Um, and they are just a cool Unix box, if, or Linux box in particular. But, you know, if you're, in, if you're interested in Unix or you know something about Linux, um, these are great. Um, you can put a flash card in them, put a lot of software on them. Uh, the thing that I like most about these compared to some of the other boards is you can self-host these. So these will just sit on your network like any other computer um, that you would have on your network. And you can run GCC and program. You can use Python, Perl, any of the tools that you normally would think of as being associated with a Unix box. In fact, this is a $35 Unix box. You need to spend a little more to get a flash card. And you'll probably also need to figure out a way to plug the keyboard and stuff. These are really cool. Um, I have a lot of these. <laughs> um, this is a Model B one. I don't have the revision 2 that they just came out with, but uh, you can see that I have a different case on this one, and uh, and it's got a camera embedded. So these one of the nice features about the Raspberry Pi is they have a $25 camera module that you can just plug in, and there's even an infrared version of these if you wanted to use them outdoors. Uh, the revision, the B plus version of these, as opposed to the version 2, have four USB ports, which is nice. And now the power and the HDMI and sound are coming out one side. We've lost the composite video, but we get four USB. This is a great little computer. Um, you know, by the time I bought the box, I probably have 60 bucks in this. So uh, I use this as my cat camera. So it sits somewhere where my cat is going to raise in front of, and I run a web server on it that captures video using, uh, I believe, the motion program that uh, a lot of Unix people or Linux people will know about. And uh, then it mails me and uh, puts the video on Dropbox for when I'm away. The cat can, uh, I can verify that my cat's inside and alive and that the cat feeders are doing their job. So that's that's a nice little package. So I, I like that a lot. Um, I have different variations of this, you know, some of the older cases. I 3D printed myself a little. This is what the camera board looks like. Um, yeah, you know, they're just little boards and so this one was my prototype one that uh, before I got the the model B plus version um, so these work um, for Ethernet um, just a word about Ethernet I'm not going to talk about peripherals a whole lot but uh, I like I got a whole bunch of these little TP link WL 725 N's or something these aren't actually supported right out of the box, which is kind of a nuisance. You need to get a special driver for these, but they're eight dollars and they do Wi-Fi and they've they've been really reliable for me. They're a little bit of a hassle to deal with. I think on this one that I just threw in the box, I have an Edamax uh, Wi-Fi, which works really well. Those are about twelve bucks from Lady Adafruit or something, something like that. They're not super cheap or not super expensive. And I also have a uh, Logitech wireless keyboard. Let's see, do I have that handy? I use this one in my living room quite often, so it's advantageous to have a... Uh, sorry, I can't get far enough away. Uh, this has a mouse and keyboard wireless, and that attaches to that dongle. This was like $25. That's convenient to have in the... in the, uh, in the uh, living room. Okay. Oh, what else have we got? Uh, we're, not, we're just getting started. Um, some boards, um, so I mentioned that the Arduinos are, are not particularly, uh, powerful. They have 8-bit processors. They run up to 20 megahertz. Enough to get a lot done, but 
there are a lot more cost-effective things. This is a, a discovery board. Uh, so these are uh, low power, uh, um, sorry, blanking, arm clones that uh, ST Micro makes. And uh, these boards are insanely cheap. I actually think I won this one in a raffle. You can see that I haven't used it a great deal. They are really low power, really cool. I think if you tried to buy this board at the, in the day, they were like 10 or $12. They're really cheap. But the software environment's not super convenient. I haven't actually figured out a lot to do with these yet. These sit in my pile. This will go in the box too. Um, later on, I sort of realized that there were bigger versions of this in uh, in uh, available. Again, in the sort of ten to fifteen dollar price range. Uh, this is the STM32 Nucleo board. It has 512K of flash on board. It's got a whole bunch of stuff. It has a board layout which is compatible with Arduino shields, which is nice. It's got self-programmers, but again, they sort of want you to use their programmers, their debuggers. It's based on an open standard they call Embed, which I haven't really figured out. There's a web-based thing you can develop for them. It's not, it doesn't really make a great fit with me. I may get around to doing something cool with these, but I haven't as of yet. So, anyway. Occasionally, I Kickstarter things, and one of the ones that I got in the Kickstarter was these little RF windows. And you can see that by the fact that they're still in their phone that I haven't done a whole lot with these. This is sort of a little mini Arduino with a RF package on it and some remote switches and stuff and an RGB LED. Um, I supported this on a whim and haven't done a whole lot with them. But because they're compatible with Arduino, you can program them the same way they can Arduino. That's kind of cool. Hmm, my box is filling up. And I'm just getting started. <laughs> Oh wow, okay, here's another one. Uh, this is the uh, another Raspberry Pi first generation. You can tell by all the cards sticking out. Uh, this actually, I think, has the infrared sensitive camera, so it doesn't have the IR blocking filter in it. I was going to use this for monitoring my cat at night, but the IR illuminator I had burned out, so I haven't been using that too much, but oh well. Um, TI makes a range of chips called the MSP430. This is one of their little quick start boards. Um, it's a 16-bit processor, low power, runs runs pretty fast. I haven't had the opportunity to really do much with it uh, because most of the things that I would do with this, I would just probably fire up the Arduino because I already know how to use those. But they're available. They used to be available. I don't think these are being made anymore, but I could be wrong. Ah. Uh, a propeller board. I can't, can't not mention propeller. Um, a lot of my buddies at the Toymaker, uh, Toymakers.com um, really are into propellers. The people up at uh, in uh, who make these uh, up in Rockwell, Rockwell. Yes, I think that's right. Um, I've been up there a few times. They actually uh, gave me one of these, which is really nice. Uh, the propeller is an odd chip, and it has uh, eight cores, and it runs in parallel. That run in parallel. They have this cog architecture, which is pretty cool. Um, it's just not that great a fit for me. I haven't gotten a lot of mileage out of these because they, you can program them in C now, but it still feels a little bit wedged in to me. Um, again, it's it's no real fault of theirs. There's a lot of people I know who build products around these. They're really nice. This one has this little piggyback board has a VGA, which is nice. PS2 keyboard and mouse, uh, SD card. This this could be a really really powerful little computer. Just not a super great fit and I haven't had the right project to work on them yet. So, sorry about that. I know I have some other uh, propeller boards around too, but uh, this is the representative that I found. Wow, still digging. Um, I mentioned the Wildfire board. This is sort of the daddy of the Wildfire board. Uh, it's, a, it's called a Nanode. Uh, Ken Boak gave me. Boak? I hope I'm saying his name right. I, I only know him as Ken. Um, gave me this board to play around with after talking to me on the web. I've also, they had an older version that you could solder together that I did. These have a combination of a couple different RF, arc, RF chips. That's a little RF chip. I think these are actually wired for the European standard, which is why I haven't used this as much as I could. Ethernet, which is very cool to have an Arduino. It's a cool board. Again, I'm, you know, same issue as with the uh, Wildfire board. It's you can probably get a more powerful board like the the Raspberry Pi for the same cost and 
and depending on what you need, that might be a better deal. But uh, cool board, lots of lots of stuff on it, and uh, pretty nifty. Oh, this isn't really a board. Uh, I keep some of these 8-pin AT Tinies around. These have 8K of memory, 1K of flash. Um, if you looked on my blog, you can. This is the basis of my blinking pumpkin and blinking Christmas hat uh, uh, projects. Um, a dollar fifteen a piece. You can wire these up uh, without a crystal, even for a lot of applications. I use these like five 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 timers actually a lot of the time, just to do crazy things. Um, let's see. Is there actually something in here? Nope, just the Raspberry Pi box. You can tell that. I'm kind of on the Raspberry Pi. I really like them. But, uh, in fact, I'm so on them that uh, here's one still in the box. So it goes into the box. Oh, again, in chips, uh, here's a 6502. I should do something with that someday. Next. Uh, let's see. Anything else? No, nothing else in the box. Cool. All right, that's box one. Box two. Uh, at, the ha at the Maker Fair a couple of years ago, these freescale boards were being sold for about 25 bucks. And this is a really cute form factor board. This is a Freedom K64. What does it say? I don't know. Anyway, um, these have a whole bunch of capabilities on them. Really cool Ethernet. I believe there's also a, some sort of... A, Accelerometers built onto the board, but again, it's one of these boards that have to, you have to get a special development environment, get it set up. Maybe I think these are also embed compatible, but I haven't really, like I said, gotten that sorted out yet. Um, I like to do my development sort of in a more familiar environment. But uh, this was about twenty-five dollars. They're a cheap, well-made board. Seems really neat. Just waiting for the right project. Um, we mentioned the Arduino. Um, Sp I really love SparkFun, and they have a version of the Arduino that they make themselves called the Redboard. Uh, during one of their special events, anniversary events or something, they uh, were selling these out for eight bucks a piece, and I got a couple of these. And what's really nice about these is there's actually no chips on the back, so these just sit flat on the ground, which is really nice. In other, every other respect, they were uh, they're just a really well-made board. They're colorful, obviously. And uh, I have a couple of these at eight bucks. They were absolute steal, the most probably the best value that I've gotten in a lot of ways, um, even at their regular price of 17, 18 bucks. I forget. Um, they were a pretty good deal if you wanted to support a good company and, and buy a good product. The red boards are, are really good. Um, I have a couple of these, so these go in the box too. Um, while goofing around, I buy a lot of stuff on a whim. Uh, this is a layer one demo board. This has a variation of the PIC processor on it and a VGA port. This was built actually as a custom board for a, a demo scene competition. They're supposed to write a graphics demo that would, graphics and music demo that would run on these. Haven't had a chance to play with this a lot. Um, it uh, seems like a cute board, powers up. Uh, I'm not super familiar with the PIC uh, stuff and development. So I haven't made a lot of headway on that, but there's another chunk of time that I've got. Oh, where are we? How's the box doing? Ooh, the box is getting pretty full. I'm particularly interested in lots of boards, again, that run Unix or Linux more specifically. Um, this is one of the cooler ones that I've got, uh, which sort of com could compete, depending on your application, with the with the uh, Raspberry Pi. It's called the OpenWRT board. And basically this is, you can think of this as sort of being the kind of board that would be inside a little home router or something. It has a 600 megahertz MIPS-based chipset. Well, it's a system on a chip, but it, it's a MIPS chip. And it runs the OpenWRT um, operating system. And uh, it's got Wi-Fi built in. This is the end Wi-Fi antenna along this edge here. And these work remarkably well. Um, OpenWRT is customized for really small environments. You can see that there's no additional storage or USB or anything. You can actually chain a lot of stuff in through this power adapter. They give you a special cable, which I seem to have misplaced already, 
um, which <laughs> allows you to hook this thing up. It's a cute gadget. I haven't played with this a ton other than to bring it up. I did run a webcam off of this using MJPEG Streamer, and it worked really well. Um, I haven't had any problems. It seemed really stable. $25 with Wi-Fi. That can act, you, there's applications for a board like this. It's really nifty. And they ship to you in this nice little little box with the appropriate cable, which now I'm going to have to go find some sometime after this. But uh, nifty. Pretty cool. Um, the weirdest little boards that I have floating around are in here. Let's see, I must have one loose. Here we go. These have become really popular. Um, this is called an ESP8266, and you can see that it's just got eight pins and a tiny little thing, and you might imagine that that's an antenna. And the way these were built originally was as a uh, serial to Wi-Fi converter, so you could basically use this as a daughter board plug it into your Arduino project or whatever, and it could send serial over the Ethernet to another one. And the cost of these is, I think you can get them as low as $3. You might be able to get them for, uh, I think I got these for around 6 a piece at from a vendor on Amazon just because I didn't want to screw with eBay. But um, the cool thing about these is um, you can actually get a development environment for these to actually program these, and they're remarkably powerful. People have been running tiny web servers and things like that on there. Um, I haven't done a lot with these yet, but I'm really kind of intrigued. The form factor and cost is so low that they're interesting in a way that may actually get me to deal with the slightly crazy environment you need to put up to program these. But uh, I'm pretty interested in these, so that's kind of nifty. Oh, let's see. Uh, I've been giving a lot of credit to the... Uh, to the Raspberry Pi, but there's also the BeagleBone Black. Um, this actually looks a lot like the Freedom Board that I showed you. The same, they're both made to fit in Altoid tins, which is kind of nice, although this board is super dense and I don't know that I would actually trust it to be in there. Um, this is, I think, the Revision C version of the BeagleBone, which is the latest. And so it has more memory, blah, 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 all sorts of good stuff. You can see Ethernet, um, HD, or uh, USB out the back. This doesn't have HDMI, or actually, I think, see, now I don't use this one hooked up. I've run these mostly headless. The idea was these were a little bit faster than the uh, Raspberry Pi. Physical quality, I would say they're probably a little bit better. They're a little bit more expensive. You don't need to have a flash card on, although they do have a flash card uh, to program them. Um, if the BeagleBone, or if the Raspberry Pi didn't exist, and I wasn't really enamored with the cameras that I've put, been putting on Raspberry Pis, this would probably be my go-to box. Uh, I think the price on this was about 45 or maybe $50. Um, but because they actually have flash on board, you don't actually need a flash card to boot them. They're pretty comparable in, in uh, cost to the Raspberry Pi. So they're pretty nifty. Um, certainly worth looking at. Um, their availability has been pretty good too, So uh, although sometimes they're hard to get. One thing about the Raspberry Pi and the BeagleBone, they're popular products, so they usually pretty easy to source. I'm told that if you wanted to embed one of the, these in a product, that the BeagleBone would be a better thing to do. It's not really a concern for me, but if you're uh, interested. Oh, let's see. I must be getting close to the bottom. What else have I got? Uh, huh. Hold on. Ugh. So, a few years ago, I, I thought about the world of hardware development, I thought it was going to just be bleak. And uh, you can see that with all this hardware that you can just buy off the shelf, the world is actually good. When I thought it was bleak, I was looking at boards like this. This is probably the oldest board I have. It's an old Olamex. This is sort of like the granddaddy of the Arduino. Uh, uh, it had a, you can see the nine pin serial adapter. This is totally old school. And uh, this has an 18 mega 88, which is several years older granddaddy of the 328. So this is really, really old stuff. Um, although this was not a particularly expensive board. I think this was a $25 board or so. This may have been one of the first development boards that I ever used. In comparison to the modern stuff, this is just so much more of a pain in the ass. Olamex does make some new uh, um, Linux compatible open source boards, which are pretty cool. Um, so, uh, but the uh, the board quality is, I mean, it's good, but it's not 
not stellar and uh, <laughs> I keep it around mostly it's just a, a reminder of what the old days were like well I think that's actually pretty close to it I know there's boards floating around my house I think I'm gonna go need to find a bigger box to put all this stuff in so that my wife won't keep tripping over it I have a I used to dream of the day that I would own my own computer and now I don't even know how many computers I have I don't even know how many computers I have that you can log into but uh, if you have any questions about any of these uh, computers or uh, want to recommend a project that I could do with them or just want to chat about development, I'm Mark Van de Wettering. I blog at the Brainwagon blog. You can reach me at brainwagon at gmail.com. You can tweet me on Brainwagon on Twitter. And I hope that you're all having a great day. Take it easy, and you'll hear more from me in the future.